Okay, so in today's video, we'll be creating this kind of interwoven type structure by creating one of these panels and basically going through here and the paneling tools and creating um, this design. And so, yeah, that's what I'll be going through today. And um, if you have any questions, let me know and I'll have the description. Uh, I'll have the link in the description for the script and the model. Okay, so to get started with today's video, um, I'm going to create a structure that uh, that looks kind of woven. So I'm going to start by creating three curves here in Rhino, put them into uh, Grasshopper, and that's how we're going to be creating our base geometry. So uh, I'm going to go here to the right view and then um, bringing in an interpolated curve. So we can go here to this drop down menu or just type in interp curve and then we'll create something like this. So we can kind of go down. Something like this. So we have this curve on the right hand side on the construction plane. So if we go here to perspective, we can now um, hold down alt and then pull on this uh, blue arrow and that makes a copy. And then we can take this one and mirror it, mirror it over from that middle. So there we have those three curves. Now we can uh, go here and type in curve and then bring in this component which contains curves. So that's how we're going to bring in these three into Grasshopper is we select, we select them and then we go right click here, set multiple curves. And now this component is going to be how we brought in these curves into Grasshopper. Now, if we double click here and type in loft, we can bring in that loft component to loft those together. And as long as uh, they're organized in the right way, they should loft correctly. Uh, but there will be some instances in which if you if they're not organized in the right way uh, they'll create a, a bad uh, result so for now we're good but you see we have those jagged edges so let's go ahead and go to the top right here i think it's cut off for you guys but go to high quality uh, right there and then you should see it a lot better and now we have the ability to take this curve and kind of play around with it um, even hit f10 and have the ability to use some of those control points to mess around with the geometry and make something complex fairly quickly. So we'll keep it simple and we'll uh, leave it where it was at the beginning. But now let's go ahead and start subdividing this to create that woven pattern. So I'm going fairly quickly through some of these steps, but I think you should be able to uh, see what I'm doing. So here we have that loft. Now we have to subdivide it. So we'll go to the paneling tools, which is actually not uh, a default here in, in Rhino 5. Um, so I have to download this and install it. So if you don't have it, that's what you'll have to do. Um, but once you have that, go to grid and then subdivide by number. So here we have surface domain number. That's going to be how we subdivide this lofted surface. And there we have basically a point grid throughout this whole structure. So let's go ahead and change the U and V number to um, something different. So I'll bring in a slider of five and see if uh, that's already looking a lot better. So let's say if we said five and then this bottom one, five also, it's a little sparse. So we can kind of increase that to match kind of what we had before. So that's looking a lot better, but let's actually increase the max of this lighter to 20. And let's see if by increasing this, we get a better aspect ratio. And what I mean by aspect ratio is uh, basically having this uh, cell or this uh, portion of the grid be more of a square rather than like a long rectangle. Um, so that's looking pretty good. And now what we have to do is take that grid and offset it. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's, uh, it's not just an offset. We have to do a grid utility offset grid. So to offset the grid, it's going to ask you for the original grid. It's going to ask you for a B rep. The B rep is actually going to be that lofted surface. And the distance is going to be how far away 
should I place uh, that the the spacing in between so let's go ahead and say 12 and you see that they actually offset in well in my opinion I would want it to offset out that way we have a better clearance in between these two <clears throat> so let's go ahead and instead of offsetting 12 let's bring in double click go to negative and now we have a negative component to plug in 12 turns that into negative 12 and now we're actually going in the opposite direction so now that we have that we can start creating um, well right now we can basically take any shape so if I were to create let's say like a cylinder here um, I can already use this to put throughout the grid so if I so if I were to go here go to panel 3d morph 3d and then bring in this so I'll double click here and go to B rep and in the same way I brought in the curves I'll bring in this B rep so I'll select that B rep right click here set one B rep and that's going to be the object that we're going to put throughout the grid so we'll take the first grid plug it into the, the grid input second grid to that second one pattern object is going to be that B rep that we just created and then it'll take a few seconds for it to calculate but you should have basically this cylinder put throughout that whole entire grid and so um, that's basically how paneling tool works but if we want to create a woven uh, structure we actually have to create the panel that looks like a woven section so that's going to be uh, this next step okay so I'll take this and I'll do a control H to hide and I'll go back here and take that loft and actually disable the preview. So right click, disable preview. And then um, I'll take this B rep and I'll actually unplug it from there. So now we only have that grid here. What we're going to have to do is actually create that section. So we're going to have to uh, now go here into Rhino. And let me actually uh, disable the preview of Grasshopper. And now go here and um, go to a new layer and let's go ahead and create that section. So I'll actually move over here and create this uh, section by uh, picking a line or a polyline and then do doing F8 or um, enabling ortho so you go just in one direction. And then we can say 12. And then so we created a 12 unit long line and it doesn't really matter how big the B rep or the segment you create is because it's going to put it throughout the grid no matter how big or small it is so uh, for us it's better to use uh, specific units that way we can um, create this in a, in a smarter way so we have this is 12 and we'll extrude curve in which direction we'll, we'll do D for direction and then we'll go this way and we'll extrude this way about four. So now we have one small section right here, which is going to be our plane that we're going to deform to create the weave. So now that we have this plane, um, I'm actually going to go to shaded view so I can see the plane. Now I'm going to do a command called cage edit. So cage edit, and then it's going to ask for, uh, make sure you have it selected before you do cage edit. Then we're going to go to rectangle. And it's going to ask you to place a rectangle where you want your boundings. And then it's going to give you control points. We'll leave the defaults. And now I can take these and move it up. So now we have kind of this this uh, bowed up plane we can take that surface or we can take the it's gonna have the control points on the surface so I'll delete the control points so now that we have this I'm actually going to um, create the next segment which is going to be to either mirror or rotate I think mirror is gonna be faster so we'll take this and we'll mirror, mirror it over and now we have the other segment but what we have to do is actually rotate it all the way around so we can either rotate it this way 
So we'll rotate it all the way around. But we have to match this with that one. So we'll do move vertical from here to here. So here we have one portion of the weave and we can actually join that together because this is going to be one of the segments. Now we take this segment and we move it over uh, the other way, but we know that th that's four and we want uh, like two uh, spacing in between. So we'll do minus six or minus is going to be four plus two. So six. And this one, we have to rotate all the way around also. So um, we're going to have to do rotate 3D, pick that center point. This is going to be rotating axis and we'll rotate it all the way around. And actually we have to rotate it the other way. So take this and rotate. So just a regular rotate. And we'll go from here to here like that. So we've created kind of this sine wave, this up and down. And now we have to do the same thing in the other direction. But notice that from, um, from here to here, we have a distance of four plus two plus four. So eight, we have 10. And in this other direction, it's going, uh, it's way longer. So we're gonna have to take this and kind of scale it down a little bit. So I just pulled on that right hand side and now we can take these and we need to rotate. So we'll hold down alt and just rotate it. And now we have basically that woven section right there that we can, um, we still have to align though. Um, we need to go from here. So we know that up here we have that center point and we need to take this one and align it exactly to the center point and same the same thing with this top one. So we have to take this one and move it to that center point. So we have everything aligned correctly. And then same thing with this one, move it to the center point there. So these are aligned. And then this one should be aligned with that one. So we'll make sure to hit project. Let's see if everything's still aligned here. Yeah. No, we have to go back. See, now if you don't do um, project, <clears throat> so we basically have to line things up, but the trick so things don't move up or down, you're going to have to hit this project. So we'll take this one and we'll move it from here to the center of that other one. We'll do the same thing with this one. We'll move it from here to that center of that one. We got that one good. We'll take this one. We'll put it to the center of that one. So we're basically in top view, aligning the segments that we just created. So there we have, um, here we have our woven section. And for a, for a B rep, when you bring it into, um, into Grasshopper, it has to be a perfect solid. So right now, if we wanted to, we couldn't bring this in because these are just individual planes. So what I'm gonna do is actually give this some thickness that way when we bring it, uh, when we put it all together, it's just one solid B-Rep. So I'm actually gonna take this and do a copy. So hold down Alt, make a copy here on the right hand side, and then go to a new layer and then extrude surface. Select the surfaces and it's just gonna extrude it up. And we're just gonna say, um, we want to go up around 1.5. And this is a pretty cool section. So now we can take that those original, we can take those original surfaces, kind of delete them. So let's actually do this, lock this layer, take that, <clears throat> delete it. And then we'll take this and do a Boolean union. And it should put it all together into one solid B rep. Now we can type in a command called merge all faces. And it'll take all the common edges and faces and it'll actually merge them together so it looks really clean. So here we have this segment. We're gonna put, go here to uh, woven section. And I'll actually add this in the description so you can have as a reference. So here we have, that's gonna be our segment that we're gonna be putting through. Now we can bring back Grasshopper. 
this segment we're going to put through the whole structure here and it's going to look pretty clean so <clears throat> let's go ahead and select that and then use that old one right click there and go set one b rep and now we can use that b rep and then plug it into the pattern objects and since it's a more complex geometry also it will take a little bit longer but as soon as um, it finishes that updating you'll see that it looks really clean now sometimes here in grasshopper it's a little bit hard to see the work just because it's red and there's some overlapping things so let's go ahead and change the color so i'll click here custom preview and then plug in those into there and it'll be pink as a default so i'll go to i'll click here and i'll go um what's it called swatch i think yeah color swatch we can change that color to something that's more visible so there you go that looks pretty clean but that's not what I, that's not the ultimate thing that i wanted to do i actually want to change the form a little bit so i'm going to get rid of let's see you see all those points i want to get rid of those so i don't see them take those points the all the grids and do a space bar and disable preview and now i want to take that curve and actually want to um, scale it so i'll go to scale and i'll pick near so i can pick one there and so i basically scaled that curve <clears throat> that was in the middle up just so i can make it a little bit more interesting of course it'll take a bit of time for it to update but you see how the weave kind of matches up with everything perfectly and so of course if also if we have more subdivisions it'll be tighter and if we have less subdivisions it'll look uh, more sparse so let's see then we can take f10 hmm let's see what else can we do to this i'll do maybe scale this one up this way <clears throat> actually i'll let me undo that one and then i'll scale both of those <clears throat> i'll actually scale both of these to make it look clean so we're doing things symmetrically here And yes, it takes a while to update. So what I'm gonna do now is actually bake this. So I'll make a new layer, call it um, woven structure. Make that my current layer, and then go here to this one, do a space bar, and then bake. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's rendered. So um, yeah, just so you have an idea of how cool kind of this how simple it is and how cool of a result you can get with this woven uh, type of structure now this is actually a basic weave we can do a very complex one we can we can mess around with this geometry and put it throughout this whole thing so that's i think that's pretty neat so i'll save both of these and put it in the description and for now i'm actually just gonna take this uh set up a rendering scene and, and render it out just to see uh, what it looks like and to uh, kind of create a thumbnail so hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new um, and let me know if you have any questions or if you have ideas for other videos because i want to be you know helping out people and and doing this more so um, yeah hopefully you learned something and i hope to see you next time make sure to subscribe if you like this stuff